Bill here with the Metals Minute. Today is Wednesday, January 14th, 2023. Well, let's talk about silver today. Uh, silver is the best performer uh, in the past week. It's also the best performer looking a year ago from today. And uh, it's also one of two metals that are up year to date. So silver is, uh, silver's been a great performer throughout history, including the most recent history. All the details are in the write-up about the, the numbers. But let's talk about uh, a silver IRA. Uh, sometimes people say, well, what's a silver IRA? If you Google that or you look up uh, what that means, you're going to find all kinds of information. And as with anything, not all of it would be helpful. But I want to share with you today some things that I believe are important to understand about a silver IRA and why that is important for us to know about and some pros and cons and some reasons why you want to consider a silver IRA and also why you, you may not want to have all your silver inside of a silver IRA. But first let's get started by talking about what is an IRA, uh, for example. An IRA is an individual retirement arrangement or individual retirement account. That's something that the government allowed to be set up and there are certain tax benefits for opening an IRA, certain tax benefits and effects of owning an IRA. And so it allows you to put money into the IRA account. And there are different rules depending on whether you have a, a retirement plan where you work. Uh, so you're going to have different limits as to how much you can put in an IRA. And it's probably best that you talk to your tax advisor or even tax preparer will probably be able to tell you how much you can put in your IRA. The IRS has limits, but then those limits sometimes are, uh, are lowered based on the situation that you may be in personally. The good news is, is even if you have retirement funds already, let's say you uh, are working for a company now and, and you've recently transitioned to where you work now, you may have retirement funds in another retirement plan somewhere else you can roll those funds into a silver IRA tax-free if it's handled right. And so you want to work with people that understand how to do that or it can create some tax headaches for yourself. So I recommend if you're interested at all in a silver IRA, call the account executives at the United States Gold Bureau. They're well-versed and they can walk you through that process and also uh, help accomplish that and, and make it happen in a way that avoids taxes and penalties when you make that transfer. And so uh, let me just say that right up front. But let's talk about what is it and what it's not. And the reason I exercise caution when talking about this is you may, you may ask your financial advisor, uh, about a silver IRA, and they might want to steer you to paper products that have the word silver in it. And, uh, you know, like ETFs or exchange traded notes, exchange traded funds, or just various uh, mutual funds that may have the word silver in it. And what we have to understand is you're not going to have actual physical silver. Uh, backing those products, even the ones that say they purchase silver, unless you have uh, several million dollars worth of that fund or that ETF, you may not have the ability, in fact, you most likely will not have the ability to convert that to physical silver. Uh, you almost have to be uh, you know, a nation state or a, uh, a large institutional player to even have the right to uh, demand silver from those investment products. So what you end up with is a, a paper investment product that's tied to the spot price of silver. And that's not the best way to own silver. And I'll tell you why. 
because a lot of times when silver climbs the most is when there's a, an excessive demand compared to supply of silver. And what happens at that time is the price of physical silver becomes significantly more than the spot price. And so if you're in an investment product that's tracking the spot price of silver, uh, some kind of paper investment product, you're going to miss out on a large portion of the gains. I wrote an article one time, we compared the performance of spot silver to physical silver over time. And it, at a time of uh, silver doing very well, unfortunately for the paper investors, they mess, left most of those gains on the table. But the people that own physical silver did very well because they were able to capture the full price of the physical silver. And in times like that, when precious metals are uh, have really climbed in price, you're often selling the precious metal at a price higher than spot. You know, typically when nothing's happening uh, in the economy, there's not, not a lot of uh, news either way, you know, as a general rule, you purchase silver a little bit above spot, and then when you sell it, it's a little bit below. Uh, but when when metals are really doing well, which we're living in times when uh, it's conducive to that very thing, you sell you sell your metal at a price higher than spot, uh, and so you miss out on those gains with paper pro uh, silver products. So I recommend if you're considering silver for your IRA, purchase physical silver. And the account executives at the United States Gold Bureau can help you figure out how to do that in the most cost-effective and tax uh, with zero tax ramifications as well. So you want to make sure you handle that correctly. But let's talk about how do you do it. Uh, you need what's called a self-directed IRA. Now, the term is a little bit of a misnomer. It's self-directed, but you don't want to do it completely by yourself. You want to make sure that it's handled correctly. And uh, most IRAs only allow you to contain uh, uh, paper investments, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, annuities, those kinds of things. A self-directed IRA allows you to take full advantage of uh, the tax code of what type of investments you can have in your retirement account. And so you want to work with a custodian that allows precious metals. Some of them will allow real estate, they'll allow business interests to be in your IRA, but you're, you're talking about a lot of expense in the administration of those kinds of self-directed IRAs. You want one that focuses in on precious metals. And that way you're staying within the bounds of the law, but you're not paying a lot of excess fees. And uh, the account executives at the U.S. Gold Bureau can help you figure out how to do that. They also, I believe there's a special going on right now where they will uh, provide two years worth of storage fees at no cost. So ask your account executive about that if you're considering a silver IRA. Okay, let's talk about why silver in your retirement account. Well, anytime we're talking about a retirement account, we want something that's going to be able to provide us with purchasing power when we're not working and earning a paycheck every week or every pay period. That's when we want the assets in our retirement accounts to provide income for us. And I, I don't know if you've listened to the news lately, but uh, it seems more and more like we are almost uh, going towards a banana republic or we're moving towards, uh, you know, third world status. Uh, when we hear about the, uh, a previous president being arrested or a presidential candidate being arrested by a sitting president and try to prevent them from running for office again, these are the kinds of things that happen, unfortunately, often in the third world. And I've been in third world countries, and, and this, this reminds me of that. 
And uh, another thing that happens is debts increase dramatically. And, you know, they don't even have a debate about the debt ceiling. They can't even discuss that without everyone demanding that they go ahead and approve an increase in the debt limit. Well, there's no, uh, no feasible way of paying for the debt we currently have, let alone the unlimited increases that some are seeking. And so these kinds of things mean that sooner or later it impacts the currency. And so one way to protect ourselves from this currency debasement is by owning precious metals. And a retirement account is sometimes a great way to own that metal for the reason that you already have that money. Uh, many times you have it in a retirement account somewhere and you can take a portion of that and just dedicate it to physical metal. And uh, when we compare the performance of physical precious metals to paper investments, we see that over time, often the precious metals, including silver, and I've already mentioned that silver is the best performer in the past week. It's the best uh, performer uh, since a year ago today, and it's one of two that are up year to date. So uh, we can go back further. We could go back to 1964, for example. Uh, that was the last year that they made silver quarters, made quarters out of silver. And uh, at that time, minimum wage was $1.25 an hour. So for five silver quarters, you would trade that for an hour of your labor. Well, of course, everyone's clamoring for $15 an hour minimum wage today. Some states, some municipalities have done that. But let's consider what if, what if our coinage was still backed by real silver, made of silver? Well, that same $1.25, that same five quarters, uh, for an hour of labor, if we simply just melt down the silver and and uh, recast it, we're you know you're talking about an hour of labor for around thirty dollars. So how's that for a minimum wage? Thirty bucks an hour if it was paid in real silver, and that would be without ever having to raise the minimum wage. So that keeps your it protects your purchasing power. Um, you know, silver is one of those things that if we look back to, I wrote a book, uh, The 7% Solution, and we discussed that you could buy a quart of grain for, you know, an ounce of silver or a measurement of silver. You can still buy that today for that same ounce of silver. You can buy that much, uh, the same amount of bread that you could purchase with an ounce of silver in 250 AD, you can still do that today because silver holds its purchasing power and there isn't any other currency that's still around since 250 AD. You know, the average life is uh, somewhere around a, a little over 100 years for a national currency and who knows at what point uh, that will be changed when, when we need it the most. So it's good to have an asset that is worth something regardless of what happens to the national currency, regardless of what mistakes politicians may make. You know, we're in a stagflation situation. We have recession conditions coming upon us while inflation is still fairly high. That happened back in the 70s and early 80s and silver performed astronomically well. So these are reasons why we want uh, uh, to have silver and consider having silver in our IRA. Let me also tell you some reasons why you may not want silver in your IRA or not all your silver in an IRA. Owning precious metals provides security and privacy. Now, retirement accounts have reporting requirements. Every year, whoever manages your retirement accounts, whoever the custodian is, has to issue a report to the Internal Revenue Service about the value of your holdings, and also they're able to find out what they are. So if you have all your precious metals in an IRA, then 
generally that has to be held with a custodian and that means that there's reporting requirements every year about those precious metals that are in your IRA. So what I recommend is not having all your precious metals in an IRA. When you already have IRA accounts, there's no additional reporting to have silver in your IRA. But if you have other funds, rather than trying to get them in a retirement account so you can have silver in your IRA, a better option is just purchase the silver outright. Uh, because that way there's no reporting requirements. Nobody is reporting every year about the value of your silver, reporting where it's being held. All that information remains private and it remains with you. And uh, so I recommend owning silver. Uh, own it any way you can, but I recommend uh, using some just physical silver that you have access to without anyone else's permission. Just use a good storage facility uh, such as the Texas Bullion Depository that has a unique relationship with the United States Gold Bureau. Ask your account executive about that. Now I want to say a word about uh, what types of silver are available for your silver IRA. Typically you can use uh, accredited bullion products and that would be for example American coins and bars from the US Mint, uh, coins minted by the Great Britain, uh, the Britannias, silver Britannias, uh, the uh, Mexican Libertad coins, the gold bullion coins, the Austrian silver philharmonics, Canadian maple leaf, silver maple leafs, those types of coins, uh, and any other coin that has to be certified by one of the accrediting agencies or that's issued by a national government that has the proper level of fineness. You have to make sure that they meet those requirements. Of course, if you're using a, an account executive at the United States Gold Bureau, they will guide you to the correct type of product that you can have in your silver IRA. One other type of silver that you can have in your IRA is a proof coin uh, from the United States Mint. And again, the account executives at the Gold Bureau, U.S. Gold Bureau, have a handle on that and can help you secure those kinds of coins. And the reason I mention that is there are times when proof coins will perform much better than a bullion coin. Uh, but for those, you want to limit that uh, to American coins. But a proof coin is one that's issued only in small numbers. They keep the, the inventory lower for those. There's a higher premium for them. There's also a higher premium when you sell them. And the other thing about proof coins is those are ty the type of metal that generally more wealthy people uh, will try to have in their possession or in their IRAs. And so that means the market for those coins is going to be somewhat protected even when there's an economic downturn. When we see a market crash of any kind or a severe recession, a lot of times prices will come down and initially will come down for bullion also. But it's just like any other type of product. When a lot of stores are having a tough time because the average consumer is having a tough time, a lot of times luxury goods are doing okay because the people that buy luxury goods are generally wealthier people. And a lot of times they have positioned their assets in such a way to be protected uh, in times of downturn, or they have so, much, so many assets that they're not affected as, as much. And so luxury goods continue to have a, a good sale and, and have a good profit. Luxury companies generally do better during times of severe market downturns. And so Proof coins are one of those categories. It's like fine art. The wealthy are always going to be trading in fine art, and they're also going to be trading in proof coins and similar type of investment grade coins. And so at periods of time where we see bullion 
prices even dropping over a period of time, often the proof coins are still holding up their value and performing better. Uh, so if you're a person that's not wealthy and say you have $2,000 to buy silver with, you might consider buying fewer proof coins than more bullion coins for your uh, holdings because there are times when the proof coins will perform much better. Now I recommend a balance. I own a balance. I recommend that you have a balance of bullion and other products, but your account executive at the United States Gold Bureau can help you figure out what mix that you need for your overall portfolio. It's a personal decision and you need uh, that expert advice. Thank you for tuning in. We look forward to seeing with and talking with you again soon. Have a good day.